like to welcome everybody tonight. We have Sue that's going to do baking with Vitality Oils and give us a little bit of information on Einkorn Wheat. Sue, I'm so glad to have you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And we'll get started. Okay. Um, don't, don't give away the recipes yet. I'm not ready for those. Oh. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, everybody. Just a little bit about me. Um, those who, who know me know I, I have a, a love for baking and cooking, and uh, I have creative uh, energies in that area because um, I like to, to dabble and, and um, uh, work with new ingredients and uh, try uh, new ways of creating uh, similar recipes. So some of that you'll get tonight. Um, I think my love expanded when I was in a job with a chiropractor and we would do a monthly recipe night and that was my responsibility. So I learned a variety of new ingredients and, and how to have healthier menus and um, uh, recipes. So that's, that's kind of my background. I, I do not have a degree in anything in regard to cooking and baking. So uh, we're all gonna be here to learn from one another a little bit later uh, after I go through the slides. That's when there'll be opportunity to have some discussion about your experiences in the kitchen. So first off, I wanna give you this quote. The food you eat can be either the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. Just let that sink in. And I don't remember if it was Dr. Jackers um, who I got that quote from or somebody that he really respected. I forgot to make that notation, so my apologies for that. But literally that's food for thought, isn't it? Um, and along with Dr. Jackers, um, kind of thought process with, with foods, three things to think about as we go through these recipes and talking about things. Uh, blood sugar impact is huge in our society, correct? Damaged fats is also huge. And then uh, chemical toxins. So just keeping those three things in mind, you can start thinking, oh, how can I be healthier? And so with that, I have, Two ingredients here. They both are shortenings. One's the Crisco that I don't know about you, but that's what I grew up using, right? This is the butter flavor. And this is an organic shortening made with um, uh, palm and coconut oil, red palm and coconut oil. They both are yellow. I'm not gonna take the covers off or anything, but with those things I, I just gave you, so I have to put my glasses on for the fine reading of this. So there is a huge warning on the Crisco sign or label. Shortening will catch fire if overheated. Damage or serious burns may result. Do heat shortening carefully uncovered on medium heat. Do reduce heat if smoking occurs. Now we know if an oil smokes, that means it's turning rancid, right? Do not leave unattended while heating. Do not fill can with hot shortening. If shortening catches fire, do turn off heat. Do cover pot until cool to room temperature to avoid reignition. Do not carry pot until cool. Do not put water on hot or flaming shortening. So that's a little wide opening um, statement on the label, right? And I'm sure there's been people who've experienced that. Um, so the ingredients that are in here, let's see if I can even find, oh. So these are some, um, you know, we talked about damaged fats, soybean oil, fully hydrogenated palm oil, palm oil, mono and diglycerides, TBHQ, and we could go on, but does that sound very good to you? So the palm one is organic palm fruit oil, organic unrefined virgin coconut oil, organic unrefined red palm oil. The only warning on here is 
contains coconut. So just food for thought. And anybody who knows anything about coconut oil, um, it is an oil that can be used at higher heats. So just wanted to give that little education tip there. Uh, let's go to our first recipe, which is pumpkin pancakes. So this is a recipe I received from my daughter and I did some modifications. And if you noticed, I put um, the einkorn flour in there. So let's talk a little bit about the einkorn flour, okay? Um, sorry, glasses again. <laughs> um, einkorn is the original staff of life. It is an ancient grain and it dates back to the beginning of agriculture. When compared to the modern highly modified wheat of today, einkorn's unhybridized genetics and low gluten levels make it more compatible with the human body and easier to digest. Nutrients are also more abundant. Higher protein, phosphorus, potassium, and vitamin B6, two times more vitamin A, four times more beta carotene and lutein, five times more riboflavin. So it's highly nutritious, wholesome, unhybridized, low in gluten, much better than um, the, well, what used to be the 99 cents um, bleached flour that we probably all baked with, right? So that's just, I, tonight I'm not gonna dive into flour. That might be another opportunity night to talk about what you can cook with, but I personally have found I like to combine einkorn with another flour. And that flour is uh, cassava flour. I don't know if you've ever heard about that, but it's a, a um, root vegetable. And um, it's gluten-free, grain-free, non-GMO, depending on what brand you would buy, obviously. Vegan, plant-based, kosher, simple ingredient, whole food flour. So that sounds like it would pair well with Einkorn, doesn't it? Complement each other. So that's why um, when my daughter gave me this recipe, she had it just with organic um, uh, flour. And so I played around with it. And this is an awesome recipe. It makes a lot and they freeze well. And you just, I just pop them in my um, uh, convection oven toaster oven type thing. And in no time you have fresh smelling pancakes and either you can have it with a little bit of cinnamon bark, a little bit of nutmeg and the maple syrup that's dark and robust is the best that your body can identify and use the minerals and such from. And you don't need as much. That's why there's only uh, two tablespoons instead of like a, a regular pancake recipe might have a half a cup or something. So quite the difference there. All right. So that's just a little bit about flour options. Uh, let's go ahead to the, the next recipe. This is not baking, but I wanted to give you something for Thanksgiving as a, as a um, recipe to introduce to your family instead of that traditional green bean casserole made with um, salty and whatever else, uh, mushroom soup that we <laughs> always had growing up. And that was always, you know, favorites. So this is more of a fresher one. And if you note it, I um, included the Vitality essential oils, uh, black pepper. And if you want to try different, um, flavors with green beans. I introduced to you here uh, a swirl or a drop of basil care or caraway or clove or dill or marjoram, oregano, tarragon or thyme because depending on um, your family tastes, these pair well with green beans. So um, just again, take a screenshot or whatever and let's 
um, you want to catch it on the replay. So that's your second recipe, perfect for um, Thanksgiving. My only kudos to this for you is if you are going to heat it because there's olive oil in it, olive oil is not intended to be um, used in high heat or medium heat. So literally just lukewarm it. If you want to have it as a hot um, uh, side dish, I would suggest you use a different uh, uh, oil. I like avocado oil because avocado is like coconut. So either one of those that can withstand higher heats. So baking it in the oven, for example, or um, on the stove in a skillet or whatever. I also, if you really like the pairing of green beans and mushrooms, I have very quickly done this when I needed a quick side, put a little butter in a um, waterless skillet, put the green beans in. I usually have raw, but you can use frozen. When they're ready, then, um, uh, you know, when they're about half done, I throw in the fresh mushrooms or the frozen again, uh, because you can buy those frozen as well. And then add whatever essential oils you want to, for that little um, pop of flavor. And if you wanted that, those, um, I can't even think what they're called, the, the crunchy onions that we would always put on top of this dish, you can, while that is happening, you can toast those and then serve it with the onions on top and you still get most of all the flavoring and a lot more nutrition. Okay, um, so the next slide. So taffy apple salad uh, by show of hands, who's had a taffy apple salad? And I always thought of it as a dessert because it used like the Cool Whip and you had uh, cut up Snickers in there and who knows whatever else people would put in, right? So this is my modified version of it. If you notice, um, we still do, if you ever made this, you do cook an egg and um, all that. So I won't go through all that, but instead of the Cool Whip or frozen whip topping, there is a version of a, a cocoa whip. So it's made mostly with coconut. Uh, and so you can also make yours from scratch, but I don't know about you, but when everybody's in the house, I like to have things that are much quicker. And as long as I remember to take it out on thought, so it's ready to, to, to mix in when I'm ready, it's good to go. You let this sit for a little bit and you have good flavor. So there's that one. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> now, this one, it might be a little hard to see, but um, who in this uh, Zoom loves pizza? Let's be honest, right? So you can have healthier pizza, right? Um, you can make your own crust, right? And you, there are recipes to use einkorn. I like uh, cauliflower crust. And it's really not that hard. So I would encourage you to, this recipe I think came from one of the essential oil magazines or something I had. So I just wanted to share with you that any recipe you can use like that and adapt it for your, your own flavors. Now for my husband and I, we love like just a, a vegetable toppings on top. So we'll put mushroom, we'll put spinach, we'll put, um, pretty much almost any vegetable I, I have um, and you know put it in that way. So uh, again, use what you have. Uh, fresh basil and um, is also always good on a, a pizza. And this way you, it can be a, a quick meal after your, your um, big lunchtime um, dinner uh, that's still healthy, right? Uh, there are also, conventionally made ca uh, cauliflower crust pizzas out there. Now I have purposely got some, again, to have quick on hand. They're not as good as your homemade, but I have also found a pizza crust mixed. It's from Simple Mills <clears throat> and it is great. Um, one box makes like two 
eight inch pizzas or something like that. And they have seasonings in there. And when you're adding your ingredients, you can um, add some essential oils to pop a little more flavor. And so um, there's lots of options out there. Just, and for me, whenever I see those on sale, that's my cue. Okay, it's a couple dollars off. I'm going to stock up on some because it, it's a per perfect, easy way. Use up leftover hamburger, leftover chicken, all kinds of things you can put on it too. So those are my pizza tips. Again, it can be a, a, almost a snack or meal, especially if you stock up on those vegetables like we do. Um, okay, our next recipe. Now this could be a dessert or it could be a healthier snack. So it's a caramel that um, it's raw, you don't cook it, and it's great with apples. So I have always loved caramel apples. That has been my fall weakness, right? With, gold, uh, with um, Granny Smith apples or Macintosh or those really tart apples, right? That has always been my weakness. So when this recipe fell into my lap when I was working at the chiropractor, I'm like, perfect. Um, you know, the, the dark and robust maple syrup is, is great. Organic almond butter. I have tried other butters and the almond butter is definitely gives it the more caramel. Um, as you can tell, I made some and it's almost all gone already. Because you have coconut oil in it, it will turn hard, but I've already just warmed it up um, by putting it in warm water. Um, I've put some on popcorn. I put a little bit on an apple pie. So it's very versatile just to kind of, and think about it, you're getting good coconut oil, a healthy fat, just a little bit of sweet that your body does identify and can use with, with minerals and such with the maple syrup and almond butter. So unless you have an issue with, with nut butters, it's good to go. Okay, um, the next one we'll talk a little bit more about. <clears throat> so this, my daughter, when she was having lots of digestive issues, uh, shared this one with me. And as you can see, it has almond flour in there. Now, uh, you can get almond flour almost at anywhere. I personally get, um, get mine at Sam's Club <laughs> because it um, is the best buy that I can find in my area. <laughs> and um, it does last a long time. Sometimes, depending on the brand I buy, I will sift it because it might be clumpy, especially if it sat for a while or anything. So that's my tip for that. Uh, this recipe already has coconut sugar instead of regular sugar and vegan butter because she has a dairy issue. The thing with vegan butter is to make sure it's soy free. Um, she also has an egg allergy. So that's why their garbanzo bean liquid is in there. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. I knew I had to put chocolate in here somewhere tonight, right? So the chocolate chips can be stevia sweetened. So one of the bands, brands I can get around here, and I usually buy the dark chocolate. This is um, Lily stevia sweetened chocolate chips. Okay. Or enjoy life. Okay. And what I like about both of these is like the stevia ones from Lily, they're smaller. So quite often I'll combine the two. So you get a little bit of a mix of those flavors. Like I don't have it tonight, but I make an awesome chocolate chip cookie with these in it. So maybe another time for that. Um, the other thing with cookies, I have really, you know, we always like going to the bakery and seeing that huge cookie and all that goodness right before us, right? But to me, that's like a serving for probably three, but you're going to eat it, right? Because it's right there. So for a little portion control, I use my Spalas cookie scoop. And then you need to watch the baking time. So instead of 14 minutes, I might 
uh, set the timer for nine or 10. And again, it depends on your ovens, right? How they, how your oven bakes. And um, the other thing I want to mention about any flour you're measuring, whether it's einkorn, almond, the cassava, any flour, the best way to measure is not by taking the measuring cup and scooping it in the bag and packing it down because you're gonna end up with more flour than the recipe intended. So I simply take a spoon, dip it in the bag, measure, measure, level it off. That's simple, that's the biggest tip. Some recipes have gone that they suggest you weigh it. I haven't gone that precise yet. <laughs> so I, I don't know how that works for, for people, but I know there's a lot of recipes that, especially with einkorn flour, you weigh it and that way you always get it right. And also with einkorn flour, sometimes again, if it gets clumpy, it's good to sift it. So uh, those were the recipes and tips I had. I wanted to keep it brief so we could have a little bit of discussion afterwards. So if every, um, we could probably, I don't know if you want to stop the recording or keep it going with this discussion. I'll leave that up to you, Beth. Thank you so much. There was so much information on things we could use and substitute and lots of tips and tricks in there. Yeah. <clears throat> in there. So thank you so much. You're welcome.